the mainstream media is being weaponized by the devil to pin people against each other. This is witchcraft. You've likely heard of this new movie that just came out called The Sound of Freedom, starring Jim Caviezel, who plays Tim Ballard, the founder of Operation Underground Railroad, which is an anti-child sex trafficking organization. The story chronicles Tim Ballard as he is first kind of tapped on the shoulder by God, so to speak, to go into the deepest parts of the world to rescue children who have been swept away into the underbelly of this criminal enterprise. The thing about this movie that's really amazing is that it's got an amazing feedback. I mean, if you were to go to RottenTomatoes.com, 77% on the critic score, which is actually pretty high, and then 100% on the audience score, which is perfect. The problem, though, is there is a lot of controversy around this movie. If you were to look at some of the headlines in the news right now, it would be deeply concerning. It might sway you away from going to watch this movie. And so I want to dive in and try to help you un understand what's happening, at least from how I'm seeing it right now, and share why the controversy around this movie is really troubling, but then also why this could possibly be one of the most important movies that we get to watch in the modern era. So let's start with some of the controversy. Well, despite what you see in the numbers right now, if you go to thenumbers.com, Sound of Freedom is absolutely exploding in the box office. I mean, in the, in the opening weekend, for example, Sound of Freedom took over Indiana Jones. Uh, Indiana Jones being like, I think, a $125 million uh, project. Sound of Freedom, if, not, if I'm not mistaken, anywhere from 12 to 15, 15 uh, million, excuse me. And Sound of Freedom brought in more money opening weekend than Indiana Jones with about half the amount of theaters that was being shown in. If you were to look even on a daily basis, on July 11th, Sound of Freedom brought in $3.8 million and Indiana Jones brought in $3.4 million. So this is what you're seeing day to day. Sound of Freedom is leading in the box office right now with only 20, uh, 2,900 theaters showing the film, whereas Indiana Jones is showing 4,600 theaters, and then they're also doing internationally. And so you're seeing, holy cow, per theater, Sound of Freedom is absolutely dominating in the box office. And why? Well, you have a major group of people in America, particularly uh, particularly a conservative audience, even though this movie is not intended necessarily for a conservative audience, you have a whole group of people who are flocking to the movies to watch this thing because it's telling a story that isn't really being mentioned a lot in the mainstream media. What's really interesting, I just went to go see the movie myself with my wife and some friends, and actually I went to go see the movie. This is the irony of this, guys. I went to go see the movie with a friend of ours who was a victim of child sex trafficking as a child. She crossed over the border illegally with her family from Mexico as a kid at six years old. And be, by doing that, she was taken by a group of people, one of the coyotes, quote unquote, that was helping take her over the border, brought her into this situation of child sex trafficking. And by the grace of God, she was taken out of that, and I'll share the story about that later because it's a, it's a remarkable story, and she's sharing the story publicly now. But we, we went to go see the movie with her, and here's what I'll tell you about the movie. The movie, yes, it's a difficult topic. It's a difficult conversation to have, but here's some things I'd want to encourage you with. Number one, the movie's PG-13. They do a tremendous job at making the movie not graphic, but very suggestive. So you can, you can understand what's happening without it being like a traumatizing experience. I thought they handled that very well. The second thing that I thought was very interesting about the whole project, it's, a, it's an apolitical project. There's no pointing fingers at one political party or another or political leaders or people of influence. No, it's actually a very uh, cut and dry story about a, a problem that is a very real problem that um, not a lot of us understand how to solve. And I thought, as I was watching it, I thought, I don't know how you could have a problem 
with this movie because there's no political interest in this movie. There's no political interest being communicated. If you love kids, if you love your own kids, if you believe that kids are the future of the world and that they have inherent dignity and they're worth protecting, regardless of what nation you're from, because these kids were uh, from, I forget what country, I think they were from Honduras, and then they were taken to Colombia, but uh, I could be mistaken about the, the country of origin. Regardless, it's an international story, and it's a beautiful story. It's a story of heroism, and they they put throughout the movie as well clips of because it's based off of a true story it's a it's a it's a narrative film based off of a true story about tim ballard uh but they also put in footage of actual raids actual sting operations and even the sting operation that the movie kind of surrounds at the climax and i won't spoil any more for you guys but here's what's really wild if you're looking at some of the the news articles coming out, I want you to see what Slate.com says, for example. It says, How Sound of Freedom Misrepresents Its Subject and Why the Movie is So Seductive. And then it goes on to talk about how it caters to a faith audience. And you have a lot of these mainstream news outlets talking about how this movie is, um, it feeds the desire of those that buy into conspiracy theories. For example, you have The Guardian. The Guardian says in their headline, Sound of Freedom, the QAnon adjacent thriller seducing America. You remember that term, QAnon? This was coming back from uh, the, the last election in 2020 about, you know, these pedophile rings and all these sorts of things. Rolling Stone, check out what they have to say. Sound of Freedom is a superhero movie for dads with brain worms. The QAnon tinge thriller about child trafficking is designed to appeal to the conscience of a conspiracy addled boomer. Well, check this out. This is what's really interesting. Number one, I don't, I've never seen so much disdain towards a movie that actually a lot of critics are saying is a good movie. A lot of critics are saying this is a good movie. The audience is loving this movie. Again, it's a PG 13 movie. So why are these people going so hard against this movie? Well, Here's where it's really interesting when they talk about this QAnon conspiracy theory. This movie, you discover at the end, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but it doesn't spoil the actual story. At the end of the movie, at the end of the credits, Jim Caviezel uh, shares how this movie was actually produced five years ago and didn't see the light of day because no Hollywood distributor would actually touch this film. And then Angel Studios comes along, they, they take on the project, and then they do essentially a limited release. And so this movie actually was created before QAnon was even a word, before anybody even knew what QAnon was. So what's the big deal here? <clears throat> well, this is where it gets kind of interesting, too. At the end of the movie, Jim Caviezel makes a comment and says, Hollywood, obviously, he's already mentioned this, would not touch this movie, and there and people are treating this like a conspiracy theory, even though we have essentially an open border between the U.S. and Mexico. And he said that is, there's a, there's documented eighty five thousand unaccompanied minors have crossed over into the border, over the border, and a lot of them have gone missing. And so you hear this, and now it's starting to become a political issue. But the movie itself is not talking about this from a political issue. But the point is, is that there's something happening right now in America. You're seeing the, the consumption of child, you know what, uh, P-O-R-N, being, he said there's a 5,000% increase over the, five, the past five years for this crazy explicit material. And that a lot of that happened actually during COVID, during the lockdowns. And so you're seeing all of this happen. And the question you got to ask yourself is, why do people not want to have this conversation? I'm not going to get into conspiracy theories here. That's not the point of what I'm trying to share. But what I am trying to share is these same news outlets. I'm going to try and find the article right now. Um, these same news outlets... Let's see if I can find what Rolling Stone have to say about this. Oh my gosh, how about this? 
These same news outlets, Rolling Stone, for example, takes the movie Cuties. If you remember, this is a movie about these girls, these little like little girls, pre-teenage girls who are getting into twerking and they're twerking on screen. And it says, Cuties Review, a coming-of-age movie caught in the culture wars. Thanks to a major marketing mistake, this award-winning French movie has been accused of sexualizing girls. It's actually a sensitive portrait of growing pains that deserves to be seen. Here's the irony. You have this same, this same news outlet giving accolades to a movie that, that, that sexualizes little kids. And then you have the same news outlet talk about a movie that's trying to combat that issue and is saying, quote unquote, this movie is great, is a movie for dads with brain worms. What is going on? What is going on? More than at a political level, let me tell you, this is a spiritual battle and there's some implications of what's going to happen here. This is what it says in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. It says, woe unto, them, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. We are in these days, guys, where people, the masses, they would, they would rather not have a conversation about this issue, which is a very real issue, very real issue. And it's, it, the demand for it is, uh, is unbelievable. And this has been happening you know, since the beginning of time, because the heart of man is so wicked, but people don't even want to talk about it right now. In fact, let's talk about this real quick. So now you're in this, where there's, there's this crazy movement happening where the term pedophile is being demonized. Someone that wants to engage sexually with children, they're trying to soften the term and change it to this word minor attracted person. So a minor attracted person is somebody who has a sexual attraction to individuals who are minors or below the legal age of consent. Do you see what's happening right now? What they're do what's happening is there is a a desensitization to this and the kids kids all over the world are going to suffer from this. But this is not just a political issue, this is not just a cultural issue, this is a spiritual issue. Jesus himself said that there's a war going on. There's a war between the kingdom of light, his kingdom, and the kingdom of darkness, which is Satan's kingdom. And this is what's going to happen, guys. I'm just, I don't want to be like a doom and gloomer, but we need to be prepared for this. There is the, the world, the enemy is going to use this conversation and is going to take the people that are standing up for this stuff. And it's, be, it's going to become a target on the back of the church. This is going to like, this is, this is leading to the church being uh, public enemy. Number one, I can guarantee you that this is what's happening because of where we stand about um, what, what a biblical marriage looks like because of where we stand on, on the sanctity and the dignity of children and so on and so forth. This is where like the, the church is going to be caught in the crossfires for this. I can guarantee you it. It's going to happen. This is what it says in verse Matthew chapter 10. Verse 15, it says, I tell you the truth, the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will be better off than such a town on the judgment day. If you know anything about the Bible, go read about Sodom and Gomorrah. It was a city that was given over to the most insane sexual perversions, which uh, here we are today, oddly enough. Verse 16, look, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. So be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. Sheep among wolves. Guys, we're, we're out in a world full of wolves whether we realize it or not, but be, but beware for you will be handed over to the courts and will be flogged with whips in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and Kings because you are my followers, but this will be your opportunity to tell the rulers and other unbelievers about me. When you are arrested, don't worry about how to respond or what to say. God will give you the right words at the right time. For it is not you who will be speaking. It will be the spirit of your father speaking through you. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 21, a brother will betray his brother to death. They're, they're doing this. The culture, the culture and mainstream media is being weaponized by the devil right now, whether they know it or not, whether they, they're intentionally doing it or not, the mainstream media is being weaponized by the devil to pin people against each other. This is witchcraft. 
What the media is doing right now is manipulating people from going to see a movie, which is a great movie. And what it's doing is it's this is this the mainstream media is going to be used to sever the ties between family members. I'm telling you, this is <laughs> you're going to see you're going to your family dinners with family members that don't agree with you, that don't see the world the same way as you because you're born again and because your eyes have been open. It's going to be a lot more difficult. A brother will betray his brother to death. A father will betray his own child and children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. If you stand up for righteousness, you're going to be an enemy. We're going to see more of it. And all nations will hate you because you are my followers. But here's the key. Everyone who endures to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one town, flee to the next. I tell you the truth. The son of man will return before you've reached all the towns of Israel. All right, guys, here's how I want to close. I want to just give you this charge because we need to recognize <clears throat> that our job as believers, our job as the church, our job as people who follow Jesus, we need to continue speaking the truth and love. We need to continue exposing the works of darkness. We need to continue putting out content. We need to be, we need to continue. This is what's so amazing right now. This, I, the fact that this war is happening, like, yes, that's concerning and we need to be prepared for that. But this is also, uh, for me, I'm like, buckle up, man. It's just getting started. Cause we, as the church, Jesus's mandate to the church was go out, preach the gospel, make disciples. And he said, the, the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. Come on, somebody. And this is, people are not our enemy. So don't miss, don't take my words out of context here. This isn't a word of uh, a war of flesh and blood. This is not a war of violence. Our enemy is not an enemy of flesh and blood. It's a spiritual enemy. And we are called to go declare the truth. We're called to go and set the captives free, not just physically like we see in this movie, but spiritually as well. And we are called to usher in the kingdom of heaven. And we're called to play offense, guys. And I love seeing guys like Jim, uh, Jim Caviezel being on the offense, making, t turning his career into an opportunity to advance a message like this. And this is the challenge. This is, I did a message. I'm going to put it actually at the end of this video. Go watch my video about how to find your God given purpose. You're going to, this and that, like, if, that uh, teaching, it's going to help you understand what your God-given purpose is in these days. God is asking, I'm telling, this is a prophetic word. Test the spirit behind this word, but I'm just going to say, I believe that this is what the Lord is saying. This is a season where we turn our plowshares into spear hooks. Come on, somebody. What does that mean? It means this is a season where we take the instruments that God has given us that were for a season of peace, meaning a plowshare, you plow the ground. And we turn it into an instrument of war, meaning your business, your resource, your influence, your social media platforms, your buildings, your real estate, your schools, all of these things that, that you own, that God has given you the grace to build for a season of peace. God is going to say, no, we're going to, it's time to redeem these things and retool these things to use as an instrument of war against the kingdom of darkness. This is exciting, guys. You're going to step into purpose like never before in this season if you're obedient to the Lord. Will there be challenge? Absolutely. Will there be op opposition? Absolutely. But what you and I need to do is we cannot be discouraged by these witchcraft messages from the mainstream media. We need to find ourselves in the word of God. We need to find ourselves in the secret place, receiving divine strategy, revelation, and encouragement and comfort from our Father and the Holy Spirit in the secret place so that we can go out and continue to advance the message of hope which is that Jesus came to set the captives free. Though we are all sinners fallen short of the glory of God, deserving eternal separation from him forever in hell because of our sin, Jesus came to live the life that you and I could never live, to die the death that only you and I deserve so that he could give us the keys of eternal life after he rose himself from the grave by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is our commission. We need to go. We need to build. We need to continue to create. And God will get the glory for it. Amen. God bless you guys. Hey, if you like this video, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Leave a, a like the video too. Let's try to get this stuff out as far as, far as possible. And subscribe if you want more. See you guys in the next video.